Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. So I want to make sure I really drive this point home when it comes to symptoms, because symptoms are not a bad thing. They are indicators. They're like lights on the dashboard. They are actually signs that the body is trying to adapt to a new environment. And the more symptoms you have, the more the body is weak trying to adapt to a new environment. So when you take a prescription drug, when you do a chemotherapy, when you um, get a vaccine, when you get sick and you're not doing any of that, um, you get a symptom and your body is weak because every single time people procreate, it's on a weak body and the person already sustains weaknesses and that's why we have biotech and that's why we have all these different medications because people are constantly trying to adapt to an environment that their body is not really adapting well to okay so that's why you see symptoms on the j juice is because they're called healing symptoms so you understand the context is because a body is trying to adapt to a new environment which is the j juice it's not harming it but you already sustain the weaknesses you already have the lupus and the fibromyalgia and the autoimmune disorders and all the different um, uh, weaknesses in all of your organs and systems. And so when you do the J juice, it's now instead of you, tr you know, being poisoned or trying to adapt to uh, minerals and elements that are already causing more imbalances to your body, you're now taking in um, a different type of concoction that is now strengthening those weaknesses and you're going to have to revisit past present and future traumas okay and so um so symptoms have to be understood in both contexts okay it's just a it's an adaptation process cancer is an adaptation process it's letting you know that the body is that weak that it cannot seem to negotiate that environment very well and then people get chemotherapy, they get cannabis, they get all these different detoxes to try to stop that programming. Well, here's the thing, you wouldn't get cancer, you wouldn't get symptoms if the body was strong enough to be able to adapt to that environment very quickly. So that's why people on the J-Juice say that they don't get symptoms anymore. I don't get symptoms when we're around somebody that, had, that has the flu or the cold. You know why? Because my body can adapt that quickly to a change in the environment when we go from um from winter or from fall to winter okay there is a change in the environment that the, the temperatures are dropping okay there's a chill in the air and the body now has to adapt and that's why we have flu season flu is a symptom that lets you know that the body is trying to adapt to the change in the environment and that's why the flu shot is out there because there are people who are weak the viruses haven't you know aren't new Though they can be because they get run through so many different bodies, so it strengthens and creates a new strain of a virus. But viruses aren't necessarily bad. They're always in the environment, no matter what. Viruses are always in the environment. And what we figured out viruses are, are they're, they're just programming. They're just data. And this programming data gets stronger as it runs through different people's bodies. And that's when people are communicable and they're weak. And then they're communicable. They're, they're blowing out sputum and mucus. And then other people catch it and then they get afflicted by that virus because they have a weak body and that's why the strains of viruses get stronger and stronger every year. But they're always around because you're around people and you're around environment and if you were actually to filter the environment through a lens where you can see viruses, they're like, they're part of the ether. They're part of the matter in our society, okay? And so, um, and so yes, yeah, so whenever you have a change in environment and you have a bunch of weak bodies, such as all of you who are now experiencing uh, the flu season and cold and you're feeling more tired and all this stuff it's your body trying to adapt and these symptoms whether they're as very like benign as just a simple cold or an allergy all the way to freaking stage five hospice cancer that tells you the state of your body trying to adapt to an environment that's always going to be changing and so you know right now in the allopathic holistic alternative therapy industry they're trying to now cover up the symptoms they're trying to take away the hormone that brings up the pain process. They're trying to take away organs or shoot you up with all these different drugs to anesthetize you so you don't feel the adaptation process. 
But here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with adapting. It's the fact that when you do adapt and you get these symptoms, it does weaken the body. Okay. And so every single time that you go through a change or you introduce things that, that, that cause a change, if you're not bringing in the right elements to help support that change in the, in, in the environment, the ad adaptation process, then it, it weakens you continuously even more and leaves you open even more on a continuous basis. Okay. Sugar, go lay down, baby. Go lay down. Go lay down. It's okay. Go lay down. Okay. So when you see the side effects of a prescription drug, you're taking in elements that are going to change your environment. They're going to be manipulating parts of your systems based upon the intention. Okay. And so when they say, yeah, the potential side effects of this drug is you know, dizziness and hair loss and, you know, I don't know, bleeding from all orifices at any given time or whatever. You can read all the different side effects. That's based upon that they've done enough case studies that when they apply this drug that has a specific outcome to, I don't know, um, uh, manipulate some of your hormones, okay, that on some biochemistries that are weaker are going to then have then um, a, a a side effect of lupus. Let's say lupus is one of the side effects. Okay, yeah, so some bodies that are that weak that have issues when they do take a drug for a specific symptom, that's going to be the side effect because that is, you know, how that chemistry in that pill is going to interact with that specific biochemistry in this specific person. And so they've done enough of uh, double blind studies and all these different studies to know who is going to get afflicted with some kind of side effect if they take a specific drug. Okay, now that doesn't mean everyone's gonna have it, but maybe at some, when drugs get recalled, it's because the body finally is able to adapt, and then, and then what happens is, is that the outcome, the, that little state of execution, the intention of the drug is being overshadowed by then all the body trying to heal. Because all disease is the body trying to adapt to this upset of homeostasis. That's all disease, and it's your insurance policy. Vaccines are an insurance policy, but it's not something that you need to rely on indefinitely as a healing as a, as a healing thing. No, vaccines are not meant to make you feel better. Vaccines are not meant to not have any kind of sickness induced because sickness is telling you that it's a change in the environment and the body's trying to adapt. That's all symptoms are, okay? So when you do the JG's protocol and you are getting symptoms coming to surface, that's the body trying to adapt to the new to the new um, environment, which is the J juice chemistry. Now you're bringing in nutrition, and the body's finally trying to heal. So when the body is going through cancer, it's trying to heal. But remember, you're not giving it what it needs, and that's why you have chronic pain. That's why you have the aging process, and you're losing minerals in your body. It is because the body is trying to heal, but you're not letting it. So you're seeing a systematic breakdown of the human body on a progressive basis, year after year. Some of you that look great in your 30s, you're seeing yourself age faster and faster, okay? And yeah, you, you won't be able to do the same as you did before when you were 30, now you have to slow it down because if you go too fast, you're gonna start then um, uh, feeling the symptoms faster because the body can't handle as much of the activity like it used to back when you were 30. You can't drink as much alcohol now than you did before because your body is slowing down. It's saying, hey, it's it's at its capacity of alcohol and, and acid and minerals and hormones. And so it's telling you, slow the F down, dude, or do that. And so that's when you see people start slowing down as they get older because the body is not able to handle it because you haven't fixed the device. You are letting it run out of gas. And then you're seeing the, the progressive degradation, and that's when you see symptoms. And that's in the context of the Jeju. Now, 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 that's in the context of the allopathic world. Now, in the Jeju's world, it's now reversing that, but you still have to revisit all the things that, um, that you ever dealt with, the past, present, and future trauma. But now you're actually able to upgrade the device to handle that change in your environment. Why the allopathic and the holistic industry get such a bad rap is because they're trying to change biochemistries on bodies that can't handle that change. When a baby gets a bunch of vaccines and they already have a very weak body, not just one, let's say a specific baby that has a very weak immune system and a weak body to boot, and they get 80 vaccines in one fell swoop, they won't be able to handle that onslaught of antibodies that are going out and, and 
and descending upon that immune system. So that's why some babies expire earlier than other babies that get the same amount of vaccines. Okay. So, you know, it, it's, it's, that, that's, you know, how would I say this? That's how the body works is that it, it, it has to be able to handle. It has to be able to handle the change in the biochemistry. Okay. And if the bi if the device is not upgraded, it won't be able to handle that massive amount of, of information, communication, data. And so, um, so that's why the J-juice is the way it is. That's why we understand that mucus is an indicator of the, a barometer of where you are in the healing process of J-juice. Okay, so let's say you're not on J-juice and you're eating Taco Bell and you're eating all these different processed foods, which is not a bad, not bad. But your body is at overcapacity. You already have imbalances in your acid. You already have imbalances in your hormones. You already have imbalances in your minerals. And then you're eating um, these very advanced data packs like processed food that have a high amount of acid and high amount of minerals. And then you have all this mucus that you're hawking up every single time you're eating that food. And then maybe one day, since you're not really fixed in the device, now you have an allergy. So that's why people develop allergies later on in life is because the body's at capacity of that one protein, that one mineral, and it's not releasing it and it's storing it. And so then when you're around it, the body goes into inflammation. And that's why you see people start cutting out certain foods in their diet. That's why you see vegans and vegetarians do what they do because they, they are now seeing that their body cannot handle the food supply. They have imbalances in their body and they, they cannot be around meat. They cannot be around milk. They can't be around processed foods. And then they demonize it and then they impose their way onto other people thinking as if everyone has the same biochemistry and they don't. Okay. So symptoms is your insurance policy and it tells you, you know, the state of your adaptation process. And the more symptoms you have, the weaker the body you have. And if you are in the matrix and the alternative matrix, not doing J juice, it is, they are indicators of, of your, demise acceleration i guess <laughs> when you see gray hair in your beard and in your your hair and you see that you can't do the things you used to do when you were 30 that is a sign that the body is shutting down and the shutdown process is is very long relative to our perception of what you know what death is people don't want to die today they don't want to die tomorrow but they don't mind dying two weeks from now, as long as it's not showing that it's imminent. And that's the whole point of the FDA is, 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 is to approve foods and approve medications where people don't shut down today, but they can shut down like, you know, 10 years from now or five years from now relative to their biochemistry. And that's why they do double blind studies. That's why they do all of these testing and they have experiments and subjects and they do animal testing, they do human testing because you guys that are degrading, wanting a state of execution, somebody has to have an experiment done on them. So yeah, they're gonna use college students who are gonna be like, hey, yeah, we'll pay you a hundred bucks. You come down here and do a sleep study. We'll pay you a hundred bucks and you will, we'll shoot you up with a bunch of stuff and we'll see what happens. We'll write down what happens, <laughs> okay? I mean, yeah, but that's what the, that's what you guys are asking for that are, are looking for a state of execution, okay? So that's why the J-Juice protocol, you know, it does talk about the healing symptoms because symptoms, no matter what, is a body trying to adapt. And then when you find when you're on the J-Juice long enough, you're not going to see symptoms. I don't see symptoms. The only symptoms that I see is that if I eat a food that I know that if I, let's say like, like, um, I'll eat a cereal, I'll eat cereal and milk. There's a lot of hormones in milk. Vitamin D is hormones. Okay. Vitamin D milk. Well, I already have enough hormones or whatever. So whenever I eat, whenever I eat, you know, a cereal with milk, I get a lot of mucus. Okay, that's by telling me that there's just that it already has its capacity of hormones. Now it's releasing it. I'll go eat, you know, I had like um, some pork chops the other day. No mucus at all because it's utilizing the amino acids, the fatty acids, the minerals, and the pro hormones in that. But milk seems to have a lot more hormones, a lot more elements in it that my body already has. So then that's why there's mucus. It doesn't mean it's poison. It means that my body just is at capacity of that, of that specific predominant element in that milk. Okay. And so I'm not allergic. It's just the fact that my body is at capacity. And that's how, that's what these indicators of mucus and triggers. See, when I get triggered by somebody, it's because they cross boundaries. I'm, at, I'm already at capacity of this specific type of person. And so when someone crosses a boundary, 
and I didn't vet them out carefully enough, then I get triggered. It's like saying the body saying, hey, you are already at capacity of this type of person. You need to let them go. And that's when you get triggered. Same thing with mucus. It's an indicator. It's a trigger. So you know that you are at capacity or and so when you see that when you're doing the J juice and you're on the diet because you're mitigating certain acidic foods and you're mitigating the spices and the extracts and the and the carbs and the and the major sugars, not the fruit sugars, because you're gonna have fruit on the, the protocol. But you're gonna find that you know when you keep a, a much more compartmentalized diet in the beginning on J juice, and then as you see the healing process go through its process, and then you start seeing the reversal in a lot of your stuff, and you're seeing your hair grow back or the minerals come back into your hair to where you're not white. Now it's not gray. Now it's like brown like it used to be. And you start seeing major reversals in your issues. And then you reintroduce foods. And then let's say you get all mucusy after reintroducing foods. It means that your body is still at overcapacity. You need to mitigate those foods yet again and stay on the diet, stay on the J juice and go through the healing. And then you'll see probably in maybe like way in the future, you'll eat the same foods that used to give you mucus, not give you mucus anymore. Because guess what? You release the excess. You change the programming and you fix the weakness. And so mucus is a major indicator of the state of your body. And symptoms are a major indicator of your adaptation process. And that's how you have to utilize J-Juice. And so I can't tell people how long or what they're going to get because I don't know what you do in your world. I don't know your biochemistry. I don't know your family history. But I know that there are major universal indicators to let you know the state of your body and how to read them and why symptoms exist and why cancer exists and why disease exists and why aging exists. And then you will apply the J juice at your, at your, you know, whatever it is that, you know, that you can apply. I mean, you apply J juice, at, at, you know, tailor it to your comfort level. Okay. And so that's why this is an individual process that I can't promise or guarantee anything to anybody. But we see the indicators are there. People are reversing their issues. People are reversing their aging process. People are, then you realize, and then maybe your libido goes down. If you have a high libido, it means that you really are on that death trajectory because the body senses extinction and it wants to procreate. So you're going to see differences in your biochemistry and how it manifests. And so that's why I focus a lot on the libido and sexuality in the beginning and then it got political and then I kind of put my foot in my mouth on Dr. Phil which I didn't mean to but I was still under the exploration process the research process but now I'm able to to uh decon well I'm able to to describe the the bio was it the biochemical constructs or the elemental constructs and the sociological constructs of our society and the sociological constructs of our society are the political aspects Okay, then you have a biochemical construct or a biological construct. If you're able to create a baby, regardless of whatever, you are human. Okay, even if you're not able to create a baby because of mutations, if you have all of the organs, and even if you don't have all the organs, if they were taken out for whatever reason, okay, if you are human with the ability to take on sexual organs, you are perfect, you are normal. Okay. And so, um, because yeah, I've had people say like, well, if they don't have, you know, the sexual organs, if they don't have this, does it doesn't mean they're not normal. No, if, if, you know, even if you're born without sexual organs, which I don't see that happening, you're still, if you're able to get procedures done to you to where you can take on sexual organs and have a baby. Yes, you're perfectly normal. It doesn't matter. I don't care who you are. If you're able to take on sexual organs in some way, you are perfectly human. That's the biological construct. Okay. So, so I've let go of the politics behind it. And now we just deal with the human and the construct, the construct, the construct of the human, how they're made up and why they're made up this way. And then what are the indicators for cancer disease and chronic illness? What are the indicators of your imbalances and balances? So you feel comfortable with the process and you can gauge on your own where you are. Okay, so, you know, we don't want people reintroducing foods too early if they're getting all this mucus because because that means that the body's over capacity and there's no point in taxing your body if your body's at over capacity on any acids, any minerals, any hormones. Okay, and so that's how we have to look at symptoms and that's how we look at J-juice and look at then the cancer disease and chronic illness in the, in the world out there. 
and then all the different therapies out there are actually doing more damage. Okay. And so um, unless they're bringing in J juice as a major part of their platform and then their therapy is something that is not the main point, but it's a great supportive point. Because, you know, when someone doesn't put the J juice as their main thing on their main platform, they're then making money off the desperate people doing this days of execution. And that to me is greedy and dis deceitful, especially if they've been introduced to J juice. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that's how you have to understand symptoms. They are a sign of adaptation to a new environment. And so, yeah, when you guys get colds and flus every season, it's a new strain, it's a new environment, and your body is weak. Because I can be around my husband. He gets sick. He gets sick at least once a year. And it might be a little tiny cold. He's a strong dude, but he does get like maybe a 24-hour sickness. And I still kiss him. I still sleep with him. I still hang out with him. I make him dinner. We eat off the same plate sometimes. And guess what? The only thing that I get maybe is a little time bit more mucus in the morning. I blow it out. But I do. I mean, even now, I mean, I'll get a little bit of mucus in the morning, a bit more than usual. And I just blow it out. But every morning I blow it out. I poop it out. I pee it out. I take showers. Okay, and I don't have any kind of headaches, any kind of mucusy craziness. I don't have, I haven't been sick since May of 2018 or March of 2018. That was the last time I was sick. And that was when I, right after Dr. Phil, and I was still doing the healing process under a tremendous amount of stress and flying on like eight different air, airplanes. Okay, that was the last time I've ever been sick as far as a flu or a cold. So at some point, your body is going to be able to adapt to an environment that efficiently where you are asymptomatic and not because of drugs or because of, of alcohol or anything else that's out there on the market to stop symptoms or from any natural therapies like colloidal silver or any of those things. But I don't get sick and I, and, and I just, and I don't even drink the J juice around. I mean, I drink J juice whenever. I haven't drank J juice in the last couple of days. I haven't wanted to. I think that's why I really, if I, if I had like um, a certain kind of food, let's say like I had a prime rib last weekend and it was moving slower than I wanted it to move slower, then I just did like a shot of my J juice and, and helped digest it faster because that's what lactic acid is. It breaks down the food faster so the body can digest it. That's why the J juice is amazing because all it is is a lactobacillus breaking down the cabbage and the kale, being energized by the salt and then in an anaerobic environment, it then, you know, creates that, that lactobacillus and the byproduct is lactic acid. Okay. And then that is what breaks down the food for easier digestion. And then that's when, you know, when, when this lactobacillus eats at the cabbage and kale and breaks it down, now you get the, the nutrients that have already been pre-digested for you. So your body doesn't have to break it down because right now people who are dealing with aging, cancer disease, and chronic illness don't have the uh they're not equipped to break down food at the level that they need to to get access to the nutrients and that's why you're seeing that progressive aging process is because people are malnourished with malabsorption and then they see their body systematically break down because of the lack of minerals and nutrition that they need to get even though they're getting some nutrition when they're eating but they're not getting it to the to the extent that they need to get it to then be able to fix the weaknesses and then regenerate the cells to then have them look like they were 30, you're seeing that the progressive decline, the obesity, the bellies, the, um, the grain of the hair and the skin and the nails depleting, the collagen depleting, the bone depleting, all of that. Because what happens is, is when, when you are malnourished, then guess what happens? The vital organs goes and steals the minerals from the bones. And that's why you see then the weaknesses in your shoulder, the weaknesses in your back, the weaknesses in your bones, you're starting seeing, you know, that you can't do what you used to do before because a body is trying to steal Peter from paying to pay Paul type of thing. Okay. So what the J juice does, it refills your mineral reserves. So it doesn't have to steal from Peter to pay Paul. And then you're able to then regenerate your body and then also negotiate the food supply without trying to avoid food. Because some of you don't even avoid food. Some of you will eat whatever, but then you're steadily gaining the gut. And then you're still, you know, you're still pooping stuff out, but you're not absorbing at the level that you should. And so when you're not absorbing the nutrients, then the body steals nutrients from different parts of your body. And that's why you see the aging process. It's because a body is still trying to survive. 
even though you're not fixing the weaknesses or giving it what it needs. And even when you do give it what it needs, the body can't process it correctly because you have too many weaknesses and you have leaky gut, you have malabsorption. Okay. And that's is what the aging process is malabsorption. But you know, our society mainstreams that, oh yeah, it's okay to age. It's okay to, to die. It's okay to get gray hair. It's okay to leave with a bang and drink as much alcohol until you pass out. That's our society because people want to be anesthetized. They want to not feel pain. They want to take their drugs and their alcohols and all their stuff. And so fine, you know, it's not up to the government to legislate morals, but they don't want people to die right off the bat. So they have to keep a balance too. It's difficult for the government to keep a balance of people that wanting to hurt themselves or enjoy their life, but they don't want their constituents to die either. And so they, they create these, uh, these insurance policies like vaccines and immunotherapies and therapies. But really, you know, now that we are subtly, I don't know, we're reproducing on bodies that are, are very, you know, um, malnourished and full of weaknesses, every generation is going to have a shorter lifespan. And you're going to see it happen. I already, I'm already studying one family right now where I already see the mother, the father, the sister, and the other sister is in the hospital. Now the daughter is having issues and she's like in her 30s and they have kids. And you're going to see the pattern in that family. And then what they're going to do, they're going to do the same thing that their parents did. They're going to go to the doctor get all these therapies done. And they're going to talk about their illness all over Facebook and how they're weakening. And then they're dealing with their mother, you know, in the hospital and they, and they, and they have kids and the kids are already seeing, you know, exhibiting symptoms. I mean, it's so predictable. Just, just look at the people around you. Look at families. There are so much evidence out there to show the patterns. Okay. That it's going to be unmistakable. The more symptoms you have, the more the body is having trouble adapting, but it's trying to. That's what symptoms are. It's just adaptation. Okay? But, you know, the more that your body is weak, the more it's trying to adapt, the more issues. And then what happens is you'll have so many symptoms to where you're then you end up in hospice or have a major event where then part of your body is paralyzed or you don't survive a heart attack or you don't survive a stroke. Because that's those are the red flags. Symptoms are the red flags. The body's trying to adapt, but you're not giving what it needs. And then eventually, you know, you know, the, the idiot lights will all come on all at once, and then the car stops, the body stops. So you know, I just there's so many ways to look at symptoms. There's so many ways to look at the J juice. You have to understand the symptoms is the it. Biotech has given you guys insurance policy, because if biotech and Rockefeller medicine allowed mother nature, allowed Darwin to really take over, all of us wouldn't exist. We would probably only have about 500 million people on this planet, not 7 billion. The fact that we have modern medicine and vaccines gave us the ability to have 7 billion people on this planet, gave, gave you guys life. Biotech and vaccines gave all of us the chance to make a good life and to create something to, un to, to then fix the, the issues and the anomalies and the mistakes that we've made as humans, okay? If we left it up to mother nature, none of us would have been alive, none of us. So you have to be able to thank biotech, but remember biotech is just a very short stay of execution. It's a temporary thing. Holistic medicine is a very temporary thing. Vaccines are a very temporary thing. Tylenol is a very temporary thing. It's not something you do indefinitely and live off of. The belief that people should die, well, that's a belief system. And that will be then your own undoing. People don't want to die today. They don't want to die tomorrow, but they're okay with dying 20 years from now. And how do you know when you're going to die? Do you, have you measured all your minerals to see? Could you handle a heart attack? Could you handle a stroke? No. Why roll that dice? If you want to die, if you want to live today and you want to live tomorrow, then why not, why not want to live 500 years from now? What's the difference? All right. Bye, Sally Meyer. I blocked you off my Facebook before and I let you back on thinking that you wouldn't be promoting your anti-vax protocol. 
but uh, I see that you're still the same person. You're not doing J juice either. I know that. And you're promoting things that are very political. Vaccines have a place for people. And you're aging and degrading. And see you later. Bye. Yeah, I do have a lot of political people on my Facebook that are not exemplifying the fact that they of their belief system. Oh, yeah, vaccines kill me. But so does their lifestyle and their belief system. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I believe in Jesus Christ. And I believe people should die. But I don't want to die tomorrow. And, oh, yeah, vaccines kill people. And they believe people should die. So that's like a total, like, hypocrisy that I can't deal with. And some people are very religious. They don't believe that people, they don't believe people should live forever. And, but they don't want people to die today. And so there's this mixed message. Oh, yeah, I don't want to die today or tomorrow. But I'll die like 100 years from now or 50 years from now. But vaccines kill people. We can't do vaccines. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck? There's a total... There's a total miscommunication here. So, yeah. See, I, I, let people, I block people, let, let them back on, giving them a chance, and then right there. So that's, that's why I block people, because the, the people don't change. Some people do, some people don't. And the usual, the very, very highly political ones, like the, like the anti-vax people, if, if they even do JJ's, great. Some do and still are anti-vax, fine. But there are people that are not doing the J-Juice and they're anti-vax. They're leaving their friends open for some aggressive virus that could take them down. So, so yeah, I, I'm not letting her back on anymore. She's done. And I'm deleting that comment. So, anyway, so that's, you know, so you guys have to understand symptoms are a sign of the body adapting so when you get symptoms from a vaccine the body is trying to adapt to that new environment because no matter what you go out there in the community with the same strains that are even stronger your body is going to trigger based upon your biochemistry and if you're one of that if you're part of that one percent that when you get exposed to that specific flu strain you will trigger what is on that insert as far as the side effects because you have that biochemistry. They already did the test to say that some biochemistries will trigger lupus, fibromyalgia, you know, um, throwing up and weakness in here, weakness there, whatever. So vaccines are a reflection of your environment. And that's why the vaccine schedule is more intense now because we have a lot more people now today. And maybe this is a reflection of the anti-vaxxers that are running their their viruses through weak bodies, making the viruses stronger and mutating them. So this is a reflection of the environment. Okay. But people like Sally Meyer won't know that because she's too afraid to die, but she's okay with dying. <laughs> Cause she ain't doing the J juice. I'll tell you that much, but she's so afraid to die, but she's okay with dying. That's, that's the hypocrisy we deal with. People are so afraid to die, but they're okay with dying. But they don't want to die today. Okay, it's like, are you freaking kidding me? We need to have consistency in thought processes. That's what the JJ says. It, it aligns the body, mind, and spirit. If you're not on JJ, you're going to be like, it's okay to die. I just want to die today. And I'm going to be anti-vax. But I don't believe in life indefinitely. It's like, <sighs> so anyways, so that's just another, another lesson. All right, bye.